Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Vito Studio and today a quick video to share with you a sample from our info card pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so you can download the sample by clicking the link in the description below. It will give you the zip file, just double click on it to unzip it. In the folder, you'll find a couple of things, the license, the installation instruction, the TFX file and the font. Please make sure to install all the font, otherwise the title will not work. So select all the font and then double click on them to start the installation process. Then once that's done, you can just select the TFX file and double click on it. It will prompt open that window asking you if you want to install the sample, just select install then moving over to davinci resolve you can go over to effect then title video studio and then here you can scroll all the way down to sample you may find here all the sample that you already have installed as well as the info card pack sample list and the info card sample background let's get started by here dragging the list into our timeline let's play it as you can see right now this title is basically a list of 10 different bullet point and they have quite uh, some interesting functionality you can uh, have them coming in one by one there is a lot that you can do but as you may have noticed right now the playback uh, is not necessarily the most fluid right away uh, because there is uh, just so much stuff going on so what i will recommend is going over to playback and then here in a render cache select smart it will just bring up that bar right here and basically it's going to switch from red to blue and when that bar is fully blue that means that your title has been fully cached in and you will get real-time playback it's just the nature of those kind of assets that have a lot of element in them or infographic they are just like a bit harder to play sometimes we're going to dive in a minute into the inspector and i'll show you exactly what you can do with that title but first i want to show you as well the background in case uh, you have a clip where for example those uh, texts don't pop up as much maybe your background is distracting so i've provided this title as well to help with that so you can basically use that right below the list. So here I'm just going to drag the list on the track above. And then here I'm going to take the info card background and I'm going to drag that right below it. Now, if I play it, as you can see, I have both of them happening at the same time, which doesn't look the best. So I'm just going to move a couple of frames forward until the background uh, is almost fully in frame. And I'm just going to offset the position of the list slightly after that. Here we go. Now, as you can see right now, the background is slightly too short. So I'm going to increase the scale of the background a little bit more, just so it cover the entirety here of our list. All right, so that's going to be our starting point. We have the background and we have the list now set up. You can easily expand them or reduce them. We're now using also a new technique before we're using a anim curve, which was uh, very heavy and taxing on the system. Now we've tried uh, a new alternative. And so those components should be a lot more reactive before. Sometimes it takes some time when you were uh, extending uh, them. Now it's basically reacting in real time, which uh, sounds like a simple thing, but uh, trust me, has been a bit of a pain in the ass to make work and uh, still retain all the functionality that we've built over time. So uh, I hope some of you that have been using our product for a while will appreciate that. So right now I'm just going to cover the entirety of my clip and I'll check in the inspector what you can do. So as usual, you have control over the animation length in second. So right now the animation length is about a second and a half. But if you want to have that slower or faster, you can modify it here. Uh, for example, here, if you want to have it being three seconds, you can select three seconds instead. And now, as you can see, obviously, uh, you know, you will need to recache again, um, but the animation now will uh, take about three seconds instead of one and a half. Here we go. So it's a lot slower. If you have a lot of points, that might be better to use a longer animation. Uh, and if you have only a couple of points, uh, maybe you want to have something that is like half a second or just a second. For now, I'm just going to default back to uh, one and a half. You can also choose between a different kind of animation in and animation out. So you have non zoom, pan and tilt. So basically right now, as you can see, we have uh, all the point coming as zoom. We can choose pan, meaning that now they're going to come from the left side to the right side one by one. Or you can choose tilt, meaning that they're going to come from the bottom to the top one by one. 
you can select the same animation out but basically in reverse so the zoom gonna be um, a zoom out the pan is gonna go out of the frame and the tilt is gonna go uh, at the bottom of the frame you can also easily select the number of point right now we have the maximum point which are 10 but from the drop down you can select for example if you want only six point you can do that and it will automatically uh, select only six point you can also choose to have it either on the left or on the right with that selector uh, here in position we can toggle it uh, from left to right. We have a specific control here, uh, switching from group and individual. I'm gonna come back to that later, but basically uh, you're gonna be able to bring each of the bullet point one by one to time it with, for example, the voiceover that you have or um, choose exactly the timing uh, of each of those points. Now we also have point spacing where you can basically choose the space in between each of the bullet points. So here, if I'm increasing that as you can see now each of the bullet points have been spaced at the exact same value so that can just help you to balance the design very quickly right now for example you know it was by default uh, 10 but if you have only six point you can still have your design being uh, balanced very very quickly and have it uh, being usable rather than trying to space it one by one and not having exactly the right space between each of those points now, in terms of stylistic choices, uh, you have the overall size and position, which is pretty straightforward. I mean that here you can move the entire list from up, down, uh, vertically, horizontally, etc. You can also adjust the overall size and the angle, but uh, the angle is not necessarily very useful in that case. Uh, also, we have the header here uh, with the first title, so you can just switch that to whatever you want. Uh, if you want to kill the line, for example, you can do that easily by reducing completely uh, the width or the height of that line, and now you will uh, have only uh, the header. For example, here, if I don't want to have the benefit, I just want to have like drink coffee, and then I want to increase the size instead. You can do that and then reposition that uh, however you want. You can uh, get it closer to the first point or further from the first point, etc. At any given moment, you can uh, bring back uh, the line as well and uh, readjust based on that line. You have the corner radius of the line. So yeah, pretty standard stuff. Here, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to bring it back to what it was like this. Then moving on, we have the bullet point themselves. So here you can adjust everything all at once, meaning that, for example, if you were to change the color to make it easy, it's just going to change the color for all the bullet point. That way it's just going to keep the entire design uh, cohesive. Meaning like here, if we want to switch to, for example, a purple, pink, we can just do that right here and it's going to be applied to each of the point, uh, no matter uh, the amount of point that we have so here if we switch back to three that will be uh, the case if we go back to uh, more point that will be the case as well you can choose if you want to have the corner uh, of the box uh, rounded or not right now by default it's uh, almost like a full circle it's fully rounded uh, but if you want to have more straight edge you can do that uh, like so or you can have an in-between which is the corner slightly uh, rounded if you don't want to have any box, then you can reduce all the uh, color channel down to zero and it will remove uh, the box entirely and you will just uh, have the bullet point and the text. You also have some softness option for the background. So here you can choose to use those to soften the background and have it maybe, let's say, uh, more like towards like a shade of black, for example, to make it pop. That's one way to go about it. Uh, you could um, I've also a glow here. If you increase the glow, then that will uh, affect that background uh, in different way. And basically you have the same control for the background of the number, but in the bullet number section. So here you can uh, as well change the color for the background of the number. Uh, you can do the same thing with here, the softness, the opacity, the glow, etc. directly from that section. The design has been made to be used uh, principally with uh, one liner that just uh, make everything looks uh, cleaner, that's easier with the spacing, etc. But if you do need, for example, here for one of the points to have multiple line or a lot of the point to have different uh, type of line, obviously then the spacing might uh, change. So uh, here you have control over the individual position of the boxes as well. So here, as you can see, for each of the line, you have the position, so you can move uh, that position independently as well. You can also adjust the V anchor. So let me show you with an example. Uh, right now, I'm gonna have a few line having different lines. So for example, here, if I'm adding uh, another line to this one and then another line 
to this one. Let's say I'm gonna do three for this. Um, so now we have different spacing between each of the bullet points. Um, also, we might want to uh, change the corner radius because it's not like looking very clean anymore. So I'm gonna start by here reducing the rounded corner angle. I'm gonna do the same thing to make it match here in the bullet number. So I'm gonna go to bullet number and reduce that as well. There we go, that looks slightly cleaner in my opinion. And what I want to do as well, um, so that's just me, but maybe you uh, tastes are different, but I would prefer to have the number being anchored here at the top. So I can do that here by selecting the V anchor. So you can select here the V anchor to have the V anchor at the top, to have it uh, here uh, in the middle or to have it at the bottom okay and then you can start to move things individually so right now i'm just gonna have it at the top and then i'm gonna uh, space each things individually so i'm gonna go at the number three this one and i'm gonna drag that slightly above like so and now i'm gonna just go uh, one by one through everything and just readjust the position between those so basically when you're doing that you realize you know how convenient it is to just do the point spacing instead and just keeping it to one line uh, that's just generally easier but uh, you can uh, do that method uh, in case you you know need to make those kinds of adjustments now that's for the designing and the visual adjustment part. I told you earlier that you can bring the bullet point one by one as you go, as you're continuing to present your video or the voiceover just present more points. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to use that control right here. So to show you how to use that functionality, I'm just gonna reset back to the default title. And basically here, you want to design your bullet point list in the entirety. So you want to just like do all the changes, the color, uh, the content of the bullet point, etc. the number of bullet point. You want to just make sure that you've done all that in the entire block that you're going to use to then uh, break it down one by one. So let's say here we're going to have a total of, let's say, five points. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to design it properly. I'm going to extend that uh, slightly to have like five points. Now I'm happy with my five points. I'm going to start, let's say, by having three points because maybe during the voiceover I was already mentioning uh, boost in energy level, hands, mental performance, and uh, rich in antioxidant. Now I just want the fourth point to show maybe, you know, 10 or 20 seconds later. Um, you can easily do that by here going to wherever you want the fourth uh, point to appear. Uh, I'm going to just do three point because that's uh, what I want to come in frame first. Then we're going to make a cut wherever we need to add the fourth point. And I'm going to switch here back to four and I'm going to select individual so now basically we have the first three point coming into frame and then we're gonna have a certain amount of time being ellipsed whatever time you want and basically then when that could occur we're gonna have the fourth point showing up and you can just keep repeat uh, that uh, as much as you want so here the fifth point i can uh, then make a cut right here and we're gonna select five and now basically we have the three point coming in first and then certain amount of time elapsing, the fourth point, and then the fifth point. And you can choose the exact timing that you want for each of those cuts to, you know, whatever length uh, your video is. If your video is 20 minutes and you want one point to showing up every two minutes, you can do that very easily uh, by doing those cuts whenever you want. Now, lastly, a quick word about the background. So basically, it shares a very similar functionality to the list title. You can adjust the animation uh, length in second for both the animation in and the animation out. You can choose also uh, both position left and right, right here. Uh, you can have the animation in being on or off, same for the animation out. Uh, the sidebar here, you can have uh, an opacity level, so you can have it at different opacity level. You can also change the color in case here you want, let's say, gray. You can do that right here. Um, you can have it being a solid. You can also control the soft edge. You can control the border of that soft edge in case, for example, here, instead of a clear background, you want to have more of a shade. So. You can have here, let's say, black, reduce the opacity, and then there will be more like kind of a shadow. Um, you can adjust the corner radius. Uh, you can adjust the border. Uh, there is a built-in shadow as well. Uh, in case, for example, here, I'm going to reset the soft edge. 
like now I can increase the shadow strength. And as you can see now, we're gonna have a shadow behind the background, which can help create more depth. And so this slight background should be pretty versatile uh, in a lot of different scenarios, not only for that bullet list, but also to use in a lot of uh, different circumstances with uh, all the sample that you may have from us. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you enjoy that title, there is a full pack available on our website with a bunch of different other lists and cards for presenting information, a large amount of information or bullet points. We hope you'll find it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.